A-levels are cunty and not in the bad bitch way, in the makes you want to jump off of a building way. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and today I'm going to be telling you how the fuck you're going to survive A-level. So make sure to like and subscribe and I hope you enjoy this video. In this video, I'm going to basically tell you what not to do and obviously what to do, but most importantly what not to do and the mistakes that I've made and that many of my friends have made and that you've probably also made and that's why you're literally clicking on this video. So yeah. The first thing that you need to understand going into A-levels and the mistake that I made is it is not like IGCSE or GCSE, doesn't matter which curriculum you're doing, it is not the same. If you got A's and A stars in your GCSEs, you can't be relaxed and you can't be like, oh, it's okay, I got A stars for everything. Um, I'm gonna go into this with the same approach that I did IGCSE because it will not work. The biggest reason that people struggle so much um, with A-levels, I think, is because it's such a change from IGCSEs and your teacher has probably told you that, you know, you have to buckle up for A-level and A-level is rough. But, you know, we don't listen to teachers. Um, doesn't matter how many times they say it, the only way that you figure that out is by going through it yourself. Do not have an arrogant mindset, that's very important. If you got A stars for your GCSEs and now you're going into the A-level course, do not be arrogant because you got A stars. Do not be arrogant because you got A stars. Listen to me, I made that mistake and I did really bad. Don't do it, just don't do it. My biggest tip for A-level is to start early, to start as soon as possible. I'm not expecting, like don't start the day school starts, that's a bit, you know, hectic, a bit ridiculous. Um, you can, that will actually help you a lot, but I know most of us are not built that way, most of us don't wanna do that. But nine, maybe 10 months before your exam, start doing little things, start doing just a little amount of work every single day, just a little bit every single day, so that by the time you get to two, maybe three months before your exams, you're prepared. You have all of your notes ready. You already know all of this stuff. You spend time on this stuff outside of class um, and that will just help you a lot. So by the time you get there, you can really just focus on past paper questions and past papers themselves. Do not fuck around. Okay, do not fuck around. Go to your classes, okay? Don't be partying all the time because you will regret it by the time you get to your exams and you don't know what the fuck is going on and you fail everything. So don't fuck around, really. Go to classes, be attentive in your classes. Um, if you have like shit teachers, use resources. Ask your friends to help you out. Friends are such a huge part of it because you guys are all actually struggling together. Me and my friends are all struggling together, so we all tend to help each other. Um, yeah, don't fuck around. Use your resources to the full ability that you can. Guys, past papers. Yo, I cannot stress this enough. Past papers are the most important part of succeeding in your A-levels, even more so than in GCSE. Um, past paper questions are very, very important. It teaches you how to analyze the question, how to figure out what the question actually expects from you, how you're supposed to answer it, because let's be real, Cambridge can be really fucking bitchy. So doing past papers is a very good way of revision. And the earlier you start with your past papers, the better, the more prepared you will be. Another thing that a lot of people don't think about is stress and how much it can impact you in regards to your studying. You have to find a way to release your stress in a healthy way. Do not do drugs. Mm -hmm. Do not do weed. Don't start smoking. Don't do it. Just don't do it. Go to the gym, read a book, find a creative outlet, but you have to find something that you enjoy doing 
and that helps you relax. Otherwise you will not make it. Otherwise you will burn out. And it's very important that you don't burn out because the moment you burn out, it doesn't matter how hard you study, you will not do well because your brain is not in the right mindset. Okay, let's talk resources. So I will be leaving the links down below in the description about the resources that I'm going to be talking about today in this video. It is all the resources that I use, it's all the resources that my friends use. I'll also be telling you which resources are free and which resources you have to pay for and for what subjects they're the best for. Okay, the first resource page that I would recommend is Save My Exams. It is top tier, it is genuinely I think the best resource page that I have ever come across and I know a bunch of them. It has a lot of different subjects to choose from and it has literally everything that you could need. It has past paper questions, revision notes, mock exams, exam questions. It quite literally has everything and within the revision notes they include videos to help further your understanding which I think is really cool and then at the exam questions um, it's past paper questions, so questions that have been found in previous exams. And if you say view answer, it shows you the answer. And at some of the questions, it even has a video for if you don't understand. The only thing is with Save My Exams, it is very much, I want to say science, like science based. So for all of the science subjects, for biology, chemistry, physics, math, mechanics, stats, stats too, for all of those subjects, it is top tier. It has revision notes, past paper questions, videos, everything that I mentioned before. The only issue with it is that you have to pay for it. You have to pay a subscription. Um, I think I pay 60 pound per year for subscription and then it doesn't have revision notes and stuff for the humanity subjects. Then for English, I use revisionworld.com. I only use revisionworld.com for English. I don't know what other subjects they have, but they have very good English notes. They have um, absolutely everything for English, child learning acquisition, language change, 10 out of 10 recommend. Then for my people who take the humanity subjects, in other words, the non-science subjects like geography, history, economics, all of that stuff, I would highly recommend tutorchase.com, even though you do have to pay premium to get access to all of the notes. In my opinion, I definitely do think it's worth it. Um, I use this for geography and it's absolutely amazing. It adds case studies, it adds, you know, definitions, everything you need. It does have a math component, but I would not recommend this for math purely just because I don't think it's as good as Save My Exams. Um, I don't think they explain it in that much depth than Save My Exams does. So I wouldn't recommend this for the sciences, but I would recommend this for the humanities. As you can see, it does have a bunch of different subjects that you can choose from. Um, and for some of the subjects though, like Save My Exams, it doesn't have study notes and revision, you know, questions and stuff. It purely has past papers, but for, like, I really do recommend this for geography and history. Here is an example of the history notes. I think the history notes are very cool. I don't take history, um, but my friend does and she uses this. And it's very detailed, it tells you everything that you need to know, it highlights the important stuff that you need to know, and it tells you how to answer questions. And then premium is £29 per month. Okay guys, I think that's all for today. I hope this video helped you. If it did, don't forget to subscribe and like. And yeah, leave any questions you guys have in the comments, any feedback, and yeah, good luck guys, you can do this. You can do this.